Welcome to the Stations of the Cross for Vocations. Included in this prayer will be quotes from St. Mother Theodore Guerin, the foundress of the Sisters of Providence of St. Mary of the Woods, Indiana. The purpose of this prayer is to assist all who believe to make a spiritual pilgrimage through contemplating the passion of Jesus Christ. This is a time we have much to pray for and to reflect upon. As we prepare to enter this prayer, you are invited to place your special intentions, your burdens and fears, your hopes and dreams into this Stations of the Cross for Vocations. We, the Sisters of Providence, are in solidarity and prayer with you. A quote from Matthew. Anyone who wishes to come after me must take up the cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. And from Pope Francis from World Youth Day, Brazil, 2013. No one can approach the, and touch the cross of Jesus without leaving something of themselves there and without bringing something of the cross of Jesus into their own life. And from St. Mother Theodore Guerin, if ever this poor little community becomes settled, it will be established on the cross. And that is what gives me confidence and makes me hope, sometimes even against hope. Let us pray. Gracious God, each of us is called to discipleship with your son Jesus through the sacrament of baptism. We are sent to proclaim the gospel, to share the good news of your saving love. Hear our prayer as we ponder the redemptive vocation of Christ who continues to call individuals to reconcile everyone and everything to you. We give you thanks for the mystery of every vocation and pray for all who have answered your call. Send forth your Holy Spirit upon all the faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Draw many young people who will dedicate themselves with an undivided and generous heart to the love of Christ and for the church here on earth. Amen. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. The first station. Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When questioning Jesus, Pilate asked, Are you a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. My kingdom is not of this world. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Jesus knew his mission. His entire life was a fulfillment of that mission foretold in the Hebrew scriptures. He chose disciples to carry out that truth. And Jesus continues that call to come follow me. Pilate continued condemned Jesus for saying that he was a king. 
Only in time would the true nature of his kingship be made known. From St. Mother Theodore Guerin Reflect seriously on what you desire to do. Above all, pray much that our dear Lord may make known to you what God wishes you to do. Provident God, you call each of us to follow you and live in testimony to your truth. You call some to publicly follow even more closely in vocations to the consecrated life of sisters and brothers or the priesthood. Awaken in them the awareness of that call and the passion to accept the challenge to live a life witnessing to your love, mercy, and justice. Amen. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. The second station. Jesus accepts his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. The cross was a Roman instrument of torture, not something that anyone would voluntarily choose. But in God speak, the cross is the ultimate symbol of God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 Jesus is bidding his disciples to take up his love and follow him. From St. Mother Theodore to love in the right way is to accomplish the whole law. It is to begin that happy life which will have its perfection only in heaven, where we shall live forever with a holy and perfect love. Provident God, you call each of us to follow your example of unrestricted love of our neighbor. We pray for those who are called to more closely unite with you in a special way. Give them the strength to minister to those burdened with pain, sorrow, confusion, and alienation. Let them faithfully witness your unbounded love through their dedicated lives. Amen. The third station Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Life is hard. We have all fallen beneath its burdens. Jesus proved that to fall is not to fail. We are given the example and the opportunity, and more importantly, the strength to rise again from the mistakes, the stumbles and the pressures that give us pause. The times we fall do not disqualify us from God's grace, but open us up to receive it more abundantly. From St. Mother Theodore Humble yourself, that is very good. 
but do not yield to discouragement. Provident God, grant us the humility of knowing that it is not by our own strength that we accomplish anything. We fall when we depend upon ourselves. We rise, not on our own, but with the strength of your love. We pray for those who have responded to your call, to the consecrated life and to priesthood, that they know the deep trust of depending on you as the source and strength for all the good that they do. Amen. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because of your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Mary was present at the start of Jesus' earthly life and was there at the end. She saw the best of his days and the worst. We saw the pain in her eyes as she gazes into the tortured face of her son. Through that pain, however, she still has the tenderness of a mother's love, ever present, ever encouraging. Jesus later shared his mother with us that she might be there to love and encourage us through our times of joy and sorrow. And from St. Mother Theodora Guerin. Oh, the daughters and sons of Providence must fear nothing as to their future. They must confide themselves entirely to their good mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Provident God, you have given your mother to us as a reflection of the faith, hope, and love which guided her life. Her vocation as mother of Jesus was extended to include us all. Help parents and communities of faith to promote and support the vocations of those called within their families and within their parishes to bear witness to the message of love, the message of mercy and justice to a needy world. Amen. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. What plans did Simon of Cyrene have that day? Surely they did not include being called to relieve the burden of a condemned criminal. Yet this unintended interruption, this chance encounter with Jesus, changed his life forever. What are my plans for this day? What are my plans for this life? If called to the unexpected, how would I respond? John Lennon said, Life is what happens to you when you are making other plans. St. Mother Theodore Guerin says, We are not called upon to do all the good that is possible but only that which we can do. Provident God, open our minds and hearts to do your will today. Send forth your blessing to those you call to minister in vocations of prayer and service in the consecrated life and priesthood. May we see the interruptions in our day as your voice spoken on behalf of those most in need of your love and mercy and justice. Let not our personal plans get in the way of yours. Amen.
the sixth station, Veronica offers her veil to Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. At the touch of his suffering face, Jesus' image was permanently embedded onto the veil of Veronica. What moved her to step out of the crowd and risk her life by offering such tenderness to an enemy of the government? What courage would it take for someone to touch the suffering face of Jesus in suffering people today? From St. Mother Theodore Guerin. But if it is necessary to be just, it is necessary above all to be kind. Provident God, you have called us to treat others with love, mercy, and justice. Give that courage to those who have dedicated their lives in your service to wear the image of your face as a recognizable sign of your love for the world. Amen. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The seventh station. Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Perhaps we have fallen again having tripped over a new rock. Perhaps it is the weight of a recurrent problem, an addiction, weakness, anger, doubt. Whatever it is, there is no reason to stay on the ground, even if it seems there has been little progress. Jesus did not ask us to follow him because we are perfect, but because he can perfect whatever is imperfect, if only we give Christ free reign. From St. Mother Theodore Guerin, Purify your hearts more and more in communion with God and acquire new strength and fervor for the time to come. Provident God, when we discover ourselves again on the ground, finding it difficult to rise from the difficulties we face in life. Lift us with your gentle strength. Place your steadying arm on us and on all who have dedicated their lives to serve you through, through your people. May your support give confidence to supersede any discouragement and overcome any insecurity. Amen. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. The eighth station. Jesus speaks to the women. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The women that were weeping for Jesus likely did not know him. Many were professional mourners who would produce their tears against the state-sponsored torture and then return home to their normal lives, seemingly untouched by this close encounter with Jesus. Jesus challenged their underlying indifference by asking them to look more carefully at their lives. Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. Can we truly come face to face with God and remain untouched? From St. Mother Theodore Guerin. It is true that you have the practical faith since you daily perform many good works. But how are they done? What spirit animates you? Provident God, you see what is in our hearts 
and our tendency to focus on outward appearances. Our actions are too often just that, rote practices that are not backed by internal grace. Send your spirit to unite our purpose with yours, our action with prayer, our message with your word. May our lives bear witness to your love and care for all people and all creation. Amen. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus bore the weight of the sin of all of humanity, past, present, and to come. It was not symbolic, but real. It, he experienced the exhaustion and disillusionment in real time, and in his humanity fell under the immense strain. The fall was not the end, because he again was given the strength to rise from the ground, to face an even greater burden. Jesus knew what was being asked of him. From St. Mother Theodore Guerin, I turned to my God and felt my confidence reanimated. From Psalm 123, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Therein lies our strength. Therein lies our hope. Be with us and with all who experience difficulties, physical, emotional, and spiritual, trying to live lives of faith and trust. May those dedicated to sharing your word witness to unfailing hope. Amen. The Tenth Station Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Adam and Eve were not aware of their nakedness until they put their pride above God's will. We clothe ourselves to cover our flaws, our insecurities, even our shame. What covers does not change what is underneath? When Jesus was stripped of his garments, he was totally vulnerable in his honesty. We are asked to be honest with ourselves. What is left when the costume is gone? From St. Mother Theodore Guerin, Be humble, simple, and frank, and you will live in peace with yourselves, and you will be happy. Provident God, we spend much time and effort trying to cover up our imperfections and faults. Give us the desire to strip off the facade and open ourselves to your healing, strengthening, and transforming love. Only after we give up our excuses can you lift us out of the shame and pride that causes us to be separated from you. Amen. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me.
when you come into your kingdom. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In his crucifixion, Jesus accepted all of the hatred and anger and arrogance of those who truly did not understand his great mission, allowing his arms to be fixed in a position of complete openness and invitation. His forgiveness from the cross was one more example of how fully he embraced even those who had not yet asked for salvation. The suffering servant in his most desperate time refused to condemn those for whom he came, including those responsible for his death. From Sister Denise Wilkinson. The Sacrament of Reconciliation provides another new beginning, an opportunity to make a firm purpose of amendment, knowing we are forgiven and loved by a merciful God who strengthens our resolve to make the life changes we so hope for ourselves. It also opens our hearts and creates empathy for others. We all share a brokenness that manifests in different ways in all of us. Provident God, there is no one on earth that your Son did not come to forgive. Jesus' arms were held open and waiting to embrace anyone who turns and asks. Who am I to judge if and when that may happen? Open my heart to see the good that you see, even in those I might see in a different light. Let us testify by the way that we treat each other and even ourselves that it is never too late to know the love of God. It is promised, it is proven, Amen. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In the eyes of the world, Jesus' death was the ultimate failure, but in reality, it was the ultimate success. The greatest act is accomplished, and hope is restored to the entire world. The people were confused. But for those who truly believe, there is a resurrection in the forecast. From St. Mother Theodore Guerin. As I said before, love caused her death. Love broke the bonds that held her soul captive. What a death! Oh no, not death, but rather the beginning of life. And what a life! Provident God, there were many witnesses to Jesus' death. The message, however, is not in his death, but in the fulfillment of the promise, the redemption freely given. This is the good news that must be shared with the world. You have called messengers to spread the word. Give them and us the grace to respond with enthusiastic joy becoming not only witnesses to Jesus' death, but more importantly, to the resurrection. Amen. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
the 13th station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. From the cross, Mary received the body of Jesus into her loving arms, much as she did 33 years before at his birth. She had accepted God's will before the Holy Spirit entered her life and must now accept God's will again. She asks again the question that she first posed to the angel, how shall this be? How does hope take root in a totally broken heart? From St. Mother Theodore Guerin. May God's holy will be done. This is what we must come back to under all circumstances. And this is what we must start out with. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Provident God, Mary's fiat was not a one and done acceptance of your will. How many times in her life was she asked to repeat it? and deepen her commitment to be all that you asked of her. Those whose lives are marked by their own fiat in acceptance of your will encounter no less need of a daily renewal. We ask that you provide access to the strength and grace that it takes to honor and strengthen that commitment, whatever the circumstance. Amen. Take, oh, take me as I am. Summon out what I shall be. Set your seal upon my heart and live in me. The 14th station. Jesus is placed in the sepulcher. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In sorrow, Jesus' faithful friends placed his body in a new garden sepulcher offered by Joseph of Arimathea. They did not understand that this was only a temporary resting place. They did not know that rather than the end, this was one more step towards the fulfillment of their most anticipated dream. Faith was about to be rewarded. Hope was about to be rekindled. Love was about to reign triumphant. From St. Mother Theodore Guerin, be assured that in leaving the past to the mercy of God and the future to God's providence, you will derive from your offering very great peace and very great consolation. Provident God. Commentator Paul Harvey used to finish his reports with the phrase, so now you know the rest of the story. We too know the rest of the story that did not end in the sepulcher. In a world that is in need of hope, Send forth your dedicated servants to spread the good news that what was foretold in the Old Testament was fulfilled in the New. We have been not only forgiven, but blessed. The way of the cross is the way of love, and we are called to be messengers of that love. Amen. And as we close this Stations of the Cross for Vocations, I'm going to share some words again of Pope Francis from Brazil 2013 World Youth Day. He says, What has the cross given to those who have gazed upon it or touched it? What has it left in each one of us? It gives us a treasure that no one else can give. The certainty of the unshakable love which God has for us. A love so great that it enters into our sin and forgives it. 
enters into our suffering and gives us the strength to bear it. It is a love which enters into death to conquer it and to save us. The cross of Christ contains the love of God, God's immeasurable mercy. This is a love in which we can place all our trust, in which we can believe. Dear young people, and those who are other ages as well, let us entrust ourselves to Jesus. Let us give ourselves over entirely to Christ. Only in Christ crucified and risen can we find salvation and redemption. With Christ, evil, suffering, and death do not have the last word because Christ gives us hope and life. Christ has transformed the cross from an instrument of hate, defeat, and death into a sign of love, victory, and life. Amen.